Turbo Conquering Mega Eagle. Alright, folks. Okay. Um, so, my mate's building a canoe at the minute, and uh, well, I'm, I'm getting serious canoe builders envy. You know, I've, I've, I've made three or four and a couple of little boats. Uh, I never put them on YouTube that was, you know, before I was into the tubing and that. Um, and I, I love the building, I love the building of the canoe, uh, probably more than I actually like paddling them. And I do really enjoy paddling around in a canoe, so <laughs> what? Uh, either way, um, Robbie's building his first one, and uh, it'd be a bit of a shame if uh, if he's got his finished and uh, I can't go out paddling with him in it. So, uh, so what? Um, I'm going to try and build the quickest possible canoe possible um, uh, and you know when I've got a bit more time I'll, I'd like to try and make a, um, a Greenland style kayak or something like that you know something that I can use a bit more but for now I just want something that's, that's really easy to put together and uh, everything I've done before has been stitch and glue um, and that's what that's what my mate's building at the minute um, but I figured what's going to be even quicker and cheaper, because <laughs> that's always important, isn't it? Is a is a skin-on frame boat, and I've I've never done a skin-on frame boat before. I've looked at them, been quite interested by them, but I've never never tried it. Um, and I'm not going to go down the route of buying all the uh, proper materials. What I'm going to try and do is a is a, a sort of budget skin-on frame canoe using um, just pretty pretty low grade softwood from the uh, from the local B&Q uh, which is a, you know, a do it yourself store and uh, and what um, and damp proof membrane yeah <laughs> like because you can get the damp proof membrane pretty heavy and um, my mate's my mate's going to try and get me some um, he said he'll probably have some off cuts floating around and he reckons his is PVC which which is something that's very easy to bond to. So um, I'm going to try something a bit different, something that not many other people have done. Because normally, when you skin and uh, when you um, skin on frame a, a canoe, you, you do it in one one sheet if you can, um, and then you have to lose the excess or you know make slits in it or whatever, and uh, um, and be very careful with your seams. But with with a PVC damp proof membrane, I'm pretty sure I can uh, I can bond it with. Um, you know, like pipe cement or something like that, and uh, I, I reckon it will create quite a nice rugged little canoe, and still be very, very light and incredibly cheap. Yeah, <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do. Um, I need to build my frame first, so I'm gonna get a big plank of wood to build it on, and um, start off with a keel, and make some little frames. Uh, I've, I've I've got an idea in my head what sort of shape I want it to be. It's gonna be quite a small canoe, um, still open top, but for one man. And uh, and what and then uh, um, you know the rest I'll just eyeball as I'm going along, try and get some nice lines in it, and uh, and uh, that's it. <laughs> See what it comes out looking like. Yeah. Okay.
Okay, I've got my um, I've got my thoughts in. Yeah, um, I just want to get this not not the corners off so my slats for the seat sit flat. I did um, sit floors in obviously. Right. Yeah. Either way, I wanted I wanted to show you this. Like I got a uh, a few old farriers files, farriers rasps. Um, so these are what uh, what the guys used to knock shoes down before they um, knock hooves down before they shod them. Um, and uh, well, these are second hand, but they're still absolutely amazing for wood. I thought I'd get them, uh, and then if I don't want to use them on wood, I see a, you know a few people making knives and stuff out of them. But uh, I'm actually really enjoying using them on on wood at the minute, just because they're so bloody coarse. <laughs> you know, it does make a bit of a mess of it, but then you can tidy it up with a fine side. But it really it really shreds timber on that side. Hardwood, softwood, doesn't matter. Uh, you can feel these these potentially have been sharper once in their life. I suppose that's why they're second hand. And uh, you know, if you've ever seen a farrier at work, they uh, they're all they're all retired by the time they're forty because it knackers their backs up. Like especially the tall guys. I used to actually date a um, a lady farrier, uh, and she was really short. And like everyone she had uh, she had trained with, you know, they have back problems already by the age they're twenty. Uh, but she was a uh, she was she was incredibly short, and you know, she reckoned that actually really benefited her because you think um, yeah, even a even a pony. Like there's still a, a lot of weight on that leg because the the tendons aren't relaxed and the horse is you know always trying to pull it down and they're they're sat there with the uh, they've got a stoop a bit for the small horses anyway and and then tuck the tuck the hoof up between their legs and and uh, and work the uh, work the hoof until uh, until the shoe fits nice or tidy up damage on the hoof and so really I suppose for those guys the the more they can cut down on the time the hoofs between their legs, the better it is for them, I suppose. But that's, I expect, why you can get these very usable uh, rasps on eBay pretty cheap. Um, have a look, they're excellent for wood, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, you know, like I said, it's got a fine side, so you can tidy it up after, but, uh, yeah, so I'm just trying to get these these corners knocked off, so, um, so my, my, my seat slats, uh, can uh, can sit flat. And the, the other benefit of having such a massive rasp is that if you're trying to, like this, like put a nice flat gradient on something, you know, you've got a, a lot of length and a lot of width to, to get it a bit square, I suppose. It always helps, doesn't it? Right. Okay, so I got my uh, I got my sheet of builder's membrane, uh, my damp proof, damp proof membrane. As you can see, the uh, the boat is painted and looking very splendid. Uh, <laughs> but look, um, so this is what I was planning on using to uh, adhere it. It's basically you know PVC pipe adhesive. It works on other stuff as well, like uh, ABS and acrylic. Um, Smells of MEK. You, know, you can actually use MEK to dissolve these plastics anyway. But um, I, I did a little test piece because I wanted to know how much it was going to wrinkle the plastic up. Because obviously it starts dissolving the plastic and starts wrinkling it up. And maybe some of you would have twigged on already where this is going to go, eh? Uh, <laughs> those of you who are experienced in the building trade, um, this damp-proof membrane is not PVC. Uh, it appears. That it's uh it's actually um polyethylene um recycled polyethylene as well you can see uh see if i can get some light on this it's a bit knobbly um so i, I think this is a blended blended recycled can you see it when it's got the light on it it's kind of uh looks a bit freckly in this light but that's uh, probably chunks of material that isn't polyethylene and didn't um didn't get blended up right or, or whatever different grades i don't know um 
So what's the long and short of this? Well, I'll tell you something. Um, so you see this uh, this bottle of PVC cement, yeah? It's, it's a plastic bottle. What do you think the plastic is that this bottle's made of? Yeah, that, that's right, you guessed it. It's like, you know, polyethylene, which is a really, really solvent resistant and hard to work with. That. There's no way I'm gonna be able to show you the PE mark on the bottom of that. Um, so, I can't, I can't bond this is the long and short of it. Uh, here's here's my sample. <laughs> it just comes out hard like that. There's no no adhesion whatsoever. So this this uh, I suppose this works. This works um, as both a uh, primarily as a solvent bond. So it, it dissolves the plastics and um, there's there's cross links in there to you know bind what's dissolved together and and stuff like. You know, chemistry stuff. It does does smell amazing. I mean, it smells just like MEK, doesn't it? But um, it is. Yeah, I'm sure that's exactly what it is. I suppose methylethyl ketone or whatever. Um, so what are we going to do? Well, this is always going to be a uh, experimental boat, and I'm very happy with how the structure's turned out. That's a uh, you know good learning exercise for me. Obviously, we don't know how it's going to handle in the water yet, so. Um, I figured we'll have a bit of fun with the builder's membrane. Um, I'm going to attach it with staples and gaffer tape. So it's going to look horrendous. Yeah? <laughs> like the boat is never going to look as nice as it does now. Uh, it's going to look awful after this. Um, however, um, with just staples and gaffer tape, it will allow me to take it off very easily and if I do find another material that I want to try and cover this with I can just have a play around isn't it I can I can um, you know throw a bunch of different materials at it and see uh, see how they all compare with um, you know attaching attaching methods and joining methods and and everything else yeah I, I don't want to get into stitching and uh, if you've ever seen people bag canvas canoes so they you know stitch them up or, or they do the same with the dacron canoes which is polyester i think um and the nylon canoes uh you know they'll stitch up a big envelope drop the canoe into it and then try and pull it tight all the way around and then heat shrink it on um that's yeah, that's the sort of thing i want to try and avoid with this yeah so just just i want to find the easiest possible way of doing skin on frame Hey, so I've managed to get this first panel pretty tight actually. Um, it's, it is going to deform quite a bit in the water uh, with the pressure on it and that. But, um, well, I just wanted to show you something. Always on on fabric aircraft, uh, one of the one of the first things you do when you walk up to them, or the first thing I do if I'm doing an inspection on one, is just to uh, press my thumb into it and and see what happens with the uh, indentation. Uh, <laughs> And I've got to say, it's not looking good for the uh, for the damp proof membrane. Let's see if we can get a little uh, a little close up of that. Yeah, see, you know, obviously, if this happens on a big scale, on a on the canoe or or an aircraft wing, then uh, the whole thing's going to be baggy as a clown's pocket and cause problems, isn't it? I don't think it's going to break. I think this is going to be, uh, I can get this watertight, um, but uh, even if I could, ah! <laughs> you don't want to close up on my face, do you? Here we go. <laughs> even if I could find a way of attaching this nicely, you know, I, I was, I was, all these thoughts going through my mind, like maybe, maybe use heat, try and weld it together, but uh, I'm kind of of the opinion now that um, it's, it's an inferior covering for a canoe. Well, Look at this absolute beauty, eh? It's like um, it's like someone's tried tried making a tent out of a bunch of bin bags, eh? Lovely. <laughs> okay. Uh, dear. What am I doing with my life? What am I doing? Eh?
Okie cakey folks, so there's the uh, canoe all wrapped up. Um, probably the only time I've put gaffer tape on something and had it look neater and tidier afterwards, you know. But e either way, <laughs> we're about ready for the water, so uh, uh, let's, let's, um, let's take a little drive and um, go and throw this in the river. Um, I probably won't take this camera, I'm afraid. I'm just going to take my, my turdy little helmet camera for helmets which um i don't know i've got a bad uh, bad track record with cameras in it like if i take this thing it's gonna there's there's no there's no um there's no outcome where this camera doesn't get ruined basically so uh, you'll have to put up with my crappy camera for a bit either way let's go and uh, throw this on the water and see what happens there you go mr cricket you're better off out of here especially if i go swimming hey There we go. Um, yeah, it's tippy already. It's tippy already. It's tippy already. Oh god, it is tippy. <laughs> oh, this isn't going to end well, is it? So one of the biggest dangers of inland waterways isn't uh, isn't the water, it's the weeds. Yeah. If I fall in this, I'll get all tangled up and drown. And there's no one here to drag me out, is there? Sort of wondering if this isn't a bad idea. Just an experiment, that's why it's covered in bin bags, mate. But uh, you know, a builder's membrane, but you know, it looks like bin bags, doesn't it? Jesus, there you are. Okay, so uh, yeah, had a had a couple of little paddles in this um, 
bin bag canoe. I think it's worthwhile having a little bit of a debrief because it's uh, it's been conceptually con concept conceptually very successful, but this particular canoe has been a little bit of a failure. But that's that's almost it's almost beneficial. Let me uh, let me drag it down and we'll explain. Okay, so. Uh, whether you gathered it or not from the pictures, this was um, from the from the videos I made with my little with my little hat cam. This is incredibly unstable, yeah. So, as far as um, my first uh, what own designed boat um, canoe, because I've made a few little rubbishy punts and stuff that were didn't really need plans. But this is the sort of first um, first sort of canoe that I've uh, I've built without plans. Um, it is very unstable. So that in is itself is a, is a very bad thing. It will float and I can paddle it around. It seems to be a um, little bit, little bit too manoeuvrable almost. Um, wants to wants to spin around unless you um, unless you've got your your, your J stroke sorted. But um, I think what I've actually stumbled into is a is a really 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 useful way of prototyping a boat very quickly. Because I'm, I, I think, I think I'll probably stick to building plywood canoes. Stitch and gluing is is very easy, and produces a very strong, strong canoe. But um, you know, my problem with that, and the reason why I've not tried designing my own stitch and glue canoe, is that um, it's very hard to map out the panels. You know, um, but if I was to build what I wanted like this, and to be perfectly honest, I, the only reason I built a single seat canoe is because I, my mate was building a canoe, and you know. I had canoe builders envy, you know. <laughs> um, what? Well, and I wanted a canoe uh, pronto before before the end of the year. But what I'm thinking is next year, you know, I'm going to try and build what I really want, which is, I mean, either either a skin on frame sea kayak. Um, I mean, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? But, but what I really want is a like the Grand Voyager. This is what I've been thinking about for several years. I've just not done it. And and by that I mean like you know a sort of five six person canoe uh maybe maybe 17 or 18 foot you know maybe even a bit longer maybe we could even push 20 foot but the thing with that is <laughs> 20 foot yeah i should probably do it shouldn't i um 20 foot canoe it'd be epic wouldn't it and then uh you know it, it could afford to be a little bit wider and more stable than you know perhaps the the 14 foot boats that me and my mates hire normally when we go on canoeing holidays and that um so but doing that in plywood would be really really difficult but it is it'd be it'd be so incredibly easy now now that i've got this sort of um this covered in that i've I found out that it's a bit uh it's a bit tippy so i could i could easily i mean i think the reason it's tippy is these uh these two chines at the bottom are very close together um and sort of hopefully there's still a scum line on here yeah, you can see where the water water came um, across here, and then back back to the top. So um, uh, <laughs> so what? Um, I think if I could if I could swell those those lower chines outwards and and have the sides a little bit more sheer, more vertical, or just make the whole thing wider. Um, it would probably work a bit better. Um, but the thing is, I mean, what this represents is about 20 quid in materials, yeah? <laughs> so it's not a boat that's gonna last forever, but a 20 quid investment with this has got me something where if it had worked nicely, I could have taken the covering back off after having put it in the water, then mapped it out with the plywood, you know, according to using, using these longer ones as stations, and then, uh, and then rebuilt it, stitch and glue, and I'd have, you know, the canoe that I wanted. So, um, you know, there's no reason I can't scale this up to a sort of 20 foot. This is, I don't know, it's about eight and a half, turned out about eight and a half foot, yeah? So, you know, 20 foot, two and a half times the length of this, maybe even bigger. No, <laughs> I mean, that'd just be silly, wouldn't it? But then, uh, 
So I probably it probably wouldn't just cost me forty quid in materials. It'd probably probably be you know two two and a half times three times the cost of materials because I'd need much heavier timbers, wouldn't I? Um, and my frames would have to be heavier because obviously the the loads. If I was just sat, if you know, if you're going to put six people in it, although I probably wouldn't try the prototype with six people, but maybe I should. Um, either way. That, I mean, a 60 quid investment, let's say, in materials would mean that I could go into building a, a plywood canoe, you know, invest invest the time in doing it nicely, which I did not do with this, yeah? <laughs> and and then I'd I'd do it safe in the knowledge that I'd be creating my own unique canoe that was really going to work. And uh, in that respect, this has been a total success because it's, uh, I consider it a vehicle for something else. It's always an interruption, isn't it? <laughs> always another interruption. So that's 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 pretty much it. I don't really know what else to say. Uh, I don't know if anyone else is, is, is feeling like they want more than following a plan. Then uh, I don't know. This could be a this could be this could be your cup of tea. <laughs> uh, the other the other thing with this is I was I was kind of thinking that I might like to use it to experiment with different coverings. Um, I mean, it's, it's unpleasantly unstable, you know. I would, I would, I'd feel really pissed off if I, you know, put, um, put sort of, you know, hundred quid into buying Dacron, that polyester stuff that I'm sure I was on about earlier, and then, and then the paint. Um, you need a, you really need a temperature controlled. Um, what do you call it? Uh, thing for iron, ironing, <laughs> like clothes iron, temperature controlled clothes iron for. Um, uh making that come out nice um i don't think i'd really i mean the lack of care i put into this woodwork um would i would i want to put that um that money into covering it i, I don't know i don't know if it, i mean if anyone any of you have some excellent ideas of what i could try and cover it with uh, give me a shout <laughs> i'll think about it and you know if anyone comes up with some novelty, very, very cheap coverings that I could use on this, then I'll, I'll just do it. Um, this is polyethylene, yeah, polyethylene um, damp-proof membrane, recycled polyethylene damp-proof membrane. Didn't cost me a penny. I've got, you know, probably twice as much as what I used here as well that, I'll, that I've got now. <laughs> I'll probably use it for something, but, um, you know, um, yeah can't bond it this is polyethylene i don't know if they're all polyethylene if i found a poly uh, uh, polyvinyl chloride pvc if i found a pvc damp proof membrane then uh, i could do a lot more of it you know make it a lot tidier um still be left with some of the problems though i mean um yeah if you've got any suggestions just uh i always try and reply to all the comments you know that <laughs> fun um yeah anyway i've rambled on for way too long now i uh, hope you enjoyed that quick little canoe build um don't think you're gonna be a speed boat yeah just put the extra extra beam in there and uh avoid having a horribly tippy canoe like me <laughs> okay take it easy folks bye bye